and we are live. Welcome back, or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Katrina, and I make bookish content here on this channel at least twice a week. Um, and today I am once again welcoming my very special guest. Look, I got the direction right again. Um, <laughs> thank you for joining me again today, Linda. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for inviting me, Katrina. No Lovely problem. Yeah, it is the 1st of July, and so it is time for us to chat about our favourite books of Q2. In the description box below, and once this is all processed after the fact, linked up above, I will have our um, favourite books of Q1 video, because we really enjoyed making that video talking about our top 10 books of Q1. Um, so it is already linked in the description box and there are links to um, all of the books in the description box as well. Um, and then if you are watching this after the fact, or if you are watching this live, I know it's a very difficult ask, but do let us know in the comments what books you have enjoyed during Q2 of 2021, um, because we've got some here and we would love to hear what uh, you have enjoyed as well. Um, hello. Hello. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I think I've gone through all the housekeeping. Um, so shall we kick off and enthuse about our favourite books of Q2? Oh, yes, definitely. Okay, well, as always, since you are the guest on the channel, I will let you go first. And Thank you. here is book number one. Okay. Uh, before I say anything else, I'd like to say that these books are in no particular order and that I found this really difficult to find which of the five books I'm going to talk about tonight. So thank thank uh, you for sharing that these are in no particular order. I forgot to put that in there. <laughs> so thanks for saying that. <laughs> and, and also that this is a spoiler free zone. So I will try so hard not to give anything away. It's difficult when you're enthusiastic about a book, but there we are. Anyway, I, I think maybe just take over the channel saying that you know no particular order spoiler free zone you know the lines you know the lines <laughs> yeah I've seen it before yeah <laughs> okay so my first book is um The Summer Seekers by Sarah Morgan and um I read this one quite early on in in the quarter and um I was I was very enthusiastic about it and it's, um, it's a really interesting story. And it's uh, really based on three ladies of all different generations. Uh, there is an older lady who's in her 80s. There's her daughter, who's, I think I'm right in saying she's in her 40s. And then there's a young lady of mid-20s. And um, they um, basically, it's all about them learning a lot about themselves uh, during a, a trip uh, on Route 66 in America, starting off in Chicago, ending up at, oh, where does it end up? Los Angeles? Santa Monica Pier. Santa Monica Pier. Thank you, Katrina. I couldn't think where Santa Monica, the word Santa Monica. Um, so anyway, interestingly enough, the, the elderly lady, her daughter's ready to put her in a home and she is not at all ready for that step. And she puts an advert in the local paper saying, I want somebody to come and drive me across America. And the lady that, the young lady who answers the advert has hardly any driving experience, has never been to America. So it's all going to be very interesting. Uh, but uh, the elderly lady sees something in this girl. So off they go. And um, I have to admit that I spent quite a lot of the book worrying about what was going to happen when this young lady arrived uh, over on the West Coast in all that traffic in a sporty car that she's, well, she's driven across the Route 66 in it, but uh, apart from that, she's not driven it before. Uh, so that worried me a bit, but um, 
I managed to enjoy the story anyway. It was a very emotional tale because, as I say, they were all the three of them were um, discovering things about themselves all the way. The daughter didn't go on the trip. She stayed at home worrying about her mum, what was going to happen to her. Um, on the way, there were men mentioned as well, but really they form a very minor part of the story. It's it's all about the ladies. And um, I'm not going to tell you what happened, obviously, just that it was um, a lovely story, very emotional, and um, something that I would recommend you might give a try. Okay? I do love the sound of the Route 66 road trip, but um, a bit like you said about worrying about the driving and the car over time. I don't know if I would find it too stressful. Mm, yeah, like, um, you, you forget about it after a while because there's yeah. other things to worry about, shall I say. <laughs> if that's not a spoiler, I don't think no, you But yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there is a handsome young man involved as well. But as yeah. I said, he's not a main character. It's all these mm -hmm. women and really, really interesting. Yeah. Do you think there will ever be one of our top 10 lists where you don't mention a Sarah Morgan? Uh, I, I very much doubt it, unless Sarah <laughs> Morgan doesn't write a book for a while. <laughs> I, imagine, I think that would be very sad if Sarah Morgan is watching. Um, please don't stop writing. I just love don't you. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay um this next book i am talking about and um i'm not going to say an awful lot about this one because i do have an author interview with carmel harrington here on the channel um she came on the channel just about a month ago now um and talked a lot about the moon over kilmore key um kilmore key is now somewhere that is on my list of places to go to the next time i am uh, across the Atlantic and um, this one features two generations of um, women in and around New York City and um, a bit like you were talking about with your Sarah Morgan it really is about these groups of female friends each of these women has a solid group of female friends and you know they are their ride or die they are their found family and um I just love the fact that we get to see both of these sets of women in this neighborhood in Brooklyn and in and around New York um and then a little bit of um the stunning scenery on the cover here at Kilmarkey so we get the best of New York and the best of Ireland as well um and this one is one of the very few audio books that I've listened to that has made me cry I do find I don't know if you find the same but listening to an audio book I sometimes find that I um don't don't emote quite as much as if I'm reading a physical book or an ebook but The Moon Over Kilmarkey had me in tears and had me gasping as well I did a big gasp at one of the reveals along the way again spoiler free but if you want to know sort of more depth about that book you can go and watch my interview with Carmel which is also spoiler spoiler free and I will say that the audio book was well narrated as well because that is important is having a good narrator mm -hmm. and it wouldn't have made it onto the list if the narrator wasn't good as well right I agree yeah yeah absolutely I, I, okay I find myself gasping whilst listening to an audiobook which makes yeah. people give you a funny look really doesn't it? <laughs> yeah it's all right if you're just at home on your own I think I was vlogging at the time and I gasped and I was like oh <laughs> yeah oh yeah okay back over to you okay my next one is a postcard from Paris by Alex Brown um, I just have to say, is this not the loveliest cover? I just love all the colours in it, and it just—it's like a watercolour. It is beautiful, isn't it? And I can yeah. just see myself sitting on that terrace in a warm summer's evening. I think it's evening. It could be evening. It could be morning. I don't know, but I could just see myself looking out over Paris. Um, so I think. Apart from anything else, that would attract you to this book. But uh, I, I like Sarah Morgan. I find Alexis Brown, Alex Brown's books, something that draws me towards them. Um, 
so this one is um, set in mainly in Paris, but some in the UK as well. And it concerns a lady who's um, suddenly inherited a, a building in Paris from somebody she knows. She doesn't know this person. She doesn't know why they've left her this building. And um, she's again, she's an elderly lady and she asks her um, middle aged next door neighbor if she'd go and check the whole thing out for her. So, you know, you would be very reluctant to in all, all, all costs paid um, two weeks in Paris, wouldn't you? But she goes anyway. And um, it's, uh, it's another story of um, discoveries. Uh, but this time, the the discoveries are about the person that owned the building that she has left to the neighbour. And um, it is just fascinating. Um, it goes, the discoveries that uh, are made, they go way back to the First World War, the Second World War, what was happening in Paris during the Nazi occupation. And um, this is all through discoveries that things are been buried in the garden, things have been built into the walls, and then there's also people that actually knew the lady that lived in the property. And um, all through it, it's just fascinating, and um, it's one of those things I really literally did not want to put down because I was enjoying it so much. Um, the last book of Alex Brown's before this that I read was called Postcard from Italy. So this is described as part of a postcard series, but they're in no way related, apart from the fact that letters and postcards are involved in it. And again, um, I'm not going to say too much about it. Uh, it's got lots and lots of interesting characters, as well as the main character of the, the lady who's gone to look at the property. And um, all the sort of minor characters have got their own little stories as well, which I always love in a book. So. Another one that I think people might well enjoy. Yeah, I like when you can kind of pick a minor, a, a side character and be like, yeah, you know, I, I really kind of get along with them. And, it, I, you know, it's the sign of a good writer as well that they've got these oh, like yeah. fully formed sign characters. Yes, and, and the book's got well-rounded then. It's, it's not just like, oh, this is so-and-so, but you don't know anything about them. Yeah. And, uh, it's it's always the nice bit about a story you can delve into their background absolutely okay my next book this is the u.s cover and the u.s title for uh lauren weisberger's latest book lauren weisberger of course is the author of the devil wears prada and that is a three book series and i love those and then her book last year um was called when life gives you lululemons here and um, it was called something like The Wives or something really boring in the UK. So in terms of a, a UK versus US book cover, her last book, the US and Canada cover definitely wins. But this one, um, this is the US cover. And in the UK, the title of this one is just Where the Grass is Green. It stops. It's just like cut off the rest of it. Oh, right. And the title is relevant because the... Um, we have three main characters in this book and um, one of them, two of them are sisters and one sister lives in Paradise City, New York. And so the title relates to the song title. So I don't know why they cut it off in the UK, but anyway, um, this is, you know, Lauren Weisberger at her finest. We have some scandals in the lives of the rich and famous. And this time um, the scandal in particular is a kind of, second wave of college admission scandals. So if you've seen the college admission scandal documentary on um, Netflix or you know you've been following any of that kind of like first wave in the news, um, then you will definitely enjoy this one. And then also on the flip side, even if you're not interested in that, if you enjoyed the um, the gossip and the scandal and the lives of the rich and famous that you read or watched in The Devil Wears Prada, then you will definitely enjoy this one. And again, I listened to this one on audio. It was well narrated and it was something 
it came along at a time when I'd been struggling with a couple of other books to kind of keep persevering with them. And this came along and I just couldn't stop listening to it. I listened to it all over a 24 hour period and I just really enjoyed it. Um, and so, yeah, highly recommend this one. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, this is the US cover, US title. UK cover is just um, where the grass is green, full stop. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and now for something completely different, rather than being Manhattan socialite type scandals, we have. Mm. Yes, we have. We've moved ourselves to the <laughs> Yorkshire Wolves um, and Jessica Redland's Family Secrets at Hedgehog Hollow. Um, now, this is part of a series, um, and this is actually the third book in the series all about um, a young lady called Samantha who is running or has just set up a hedgehog rescue centre at her beautiful farm which has been left to her, another person being left, something wonderful. Um, and um, the farm is called Hedgehog Hollow because the people who lived there before used to like the hedgehogs that came around. And um, so Samantha set up her um, rescue centre. And um, what, what I particularly like here, I, I do like a series and, and seeing all the recurring characters and uh, saying, oh, yes, this so-and-so and what are they up to. Um, the author has very, very thoughtfully uh, included at the beginning of her book a story so far which I thought was a really good idea, and also a guide to recurring characters. So you know who's who if you haven't been following the series. But oh. I would say, why have you not been following the series? Because <laughs> it's very good. Uh, and also in this one, but not in her previous two, um, she's included some facts about hedgehogs, which is marvellous. I love hedgehogs. And we have some come in our garden and I feed them every day uh, and also advice about caring for them if you find them abandoned. So I thought that was a really good touch. Anyway, this particular part of the series, um, it's dealing with uh, the family of Samantha and also the family of her fiance. And somehow or other, she ends up with a complete house full of some of his family, some of her family. It's total chaos and there's all sorts of family feuds going on and all that sort of thing. But there's plenty of hedgehog action as well because people are always coming up to the door with a, a box full of hedgehogs that they found in their garden and, and that sort of thing. Uh, anyway, the they, um, family feuding goes on and there's some incredible revelations happening and the whole book ends on such a cliffhanger, which I quite like as well. So I'm just on tenterhooks waiting for the next one to come out. But um, it's certainly a series that I could I could recommend to anyone. It's set in Yorkshire, which appeals to me. The uh, author herself, Jessica Redland, uh, is a Yorkshire lady. And um, I, I would say, you know, don't just read this one, start. Start from the beginning, read them all. What number is, is this one in the series? This, this is the third, one. third one, yeah. The third book in the series. And I was just clicking back over because I was like, I, you said it ended on a cliffhanger. Are you, it, on the whole, like pro-cliffhanger, anti-cliffhanger? Um, I am pro-cliffhanger as long as the gap isn't too big. You know, yeah. like, I'm, I'm like... When is this book coming out? <laughs> I've invested myself in these characters. I really want to know what's going to happen because it's pretty serious what's going on here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let us know in comments pro cliffhanger, anti cliffhanger, where do yeah. you stand? Yeah. Um, yeah. I was like, cliffhanger? No. <laughs> I can't cope. Can't cope. This is this is why with the Disney Plus series right now, I wait until all the episodes have been released so I can just binge watch them all together. I've become, yeah, yeah Netflix has spoiled me. Mm. 
Yeah. I can't stand the ones that, you know, they end on a cliffhanger and you've got to wait for months for another series. That is just so awful. <sighs> I know, I know. It's horrible. It's That's like... Horrible. It's like what just happened with Love Victor series one ended on a cliffhanger and we had to wait a whole year for series two and then that ended on a cliffhanger. Yeah. No, yeah. not on. Anyway, back to books. <laughs> yeah, let us know in comments. Pro, anti cliffhanger, where do you stand? Um, I have, again, we're going in a different direction here from Hedgehog Hollow. Um, this is No Hiding in Boise by Kim Hooper, um, which just came out here in the US last month. Um, and I read a proof copy of this one. Kim was very lovely and sent me a an early, very early copy. Um, but this one is also available in audio. Um, I know my library has the audio. Um, now, this one does come with care warnings for um, mass shootings. This one starts off with a mass shooting in a bar, um, which I didn't know going into it. I was like, oh, this this is going in a different direction from what I thought. But then it was then the structure of this book that really hooked me in. And um, again, it kind of came along at a time where I was like struggling to read anything other than audiobooks. And so the fact that I was sat here and I kept turning the pages and turning the pages and turning the pages, because basically we get to um, revisit um, all of the people who were involved or impacted by that shooting that night. And so it goes over a, a select period of time, but it has um, three main characters, all of them women, who we always get to go back and see. But then we have other characters who are dropped in there, whether they were like at the bar or whether they are kind of like involved in the story after the fact. And so, yeah, the structure of this book was what um, drew me in and had me turning the pages um, because... I love a dual narrative and you you get to find out so many more details about that night and about the people involved in that night and how they came to be there and why they came to be, including the shooter. And that to me is just, it's, you know, if you love a character driven novel, this is for you. It's adult fiction. It's, um, you know, obviously take heed of the care warning, but if you are okay with that, and you love a character-driven novel, um, then this one is definitely for you. I don't know how well it would work on audio, jumping back and forth. I'm presuming that it's a full cast audio um, so that you can identify who's talking when. Uh, but I, yeah, I couldn't put it down once I picked this up. And even though you're like, oh, it's a book about a mass shooting, it's it's not really about that. It's very much more like about the characters and it being a character driven novel and I just got so invested in those characters and it wasn't you know it wasn't issues issues based which a book about mass shooting could have been um I did cry a little bit um but I also laughed and I also just got really invested in these three women in particular so something again very different. I think our list is quite diverse. It sounds, it sounds really interesting. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not sure if I could handle this mass shooting aspect of it. Yeah, and that's why whenever I'm kind of recommending this book or talking about this book, I always give that care warning first of all, just because you know you need to you need to have that, and it 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 is difficult coming off the back of so many mass shootings over here at the minute as well. And so, yeah. So uh, yeah, let's let's change direction again. The next book that you're talking about again is, I think, something that was quite different from what you expected, but in it a was. good way. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, yes, this is uh, a day at the beach hut by Veronica Henry. Um, Veronica Henry. Um, people watching may know that she's written a whole series of books uh, called Something at the Beach Hut. Uh, based on a fictional seaside town of Everdeen, uh, which can, which has a row of those lovely beach huts, which I've always been fascinated by, to be honest, and I would love to spend some time in a beach hut. But uh, the beach huts there sound absolutely wonderful. So anyway, I, I picked up a day at the beach hut. And in fact, um, 
I, I saw Veronica Henry being interviewed about it and she was saying that it's actually in the non-fiction books um, top 10 um, and um, it's it's a it's a strange one really it's not entirely non-fiction so it's a bit of a mixture but not not an unpleasant mixture i may say um i very i very much enjoyed it so what we have here is a, a mixture of short stories and recipes and um some anecdotes of the author's experiences when she's been on the beach or Staying in a beach hut, and um, all together, really, really interesting. So basically, the the format is um, we've got uh, a whole day at, at beach hut or on the beach, and um, the various meals that you would have during that day and recipes um, for such meals, um, and the um, and an accompanying short story. And the short stories are all different um, in their um, subject, but um, two or three of them mention um, the same uh, characters. So again, uh, I, I like that because I'm like, oh, I know you. So we've got the same character maybe at uh, one age, but in a, another story, they're younger or they're older um, and harking back to something that happened in yet another story. So it was it was very interesting, um, as well as uh, the other things that I've mentioned. She's also got lists of her, excuse me, lists of her um, favourite beach hat board games, for example and uh, beach reads so some interesting um suggestions for books to read at the beach and um so all, all together there's an awful lot going on in this book so um lots and lots of interesting recipes i've i've tried out a few veronica henry recipes in the past from her newsletter um but so far i have only tried banana pancakes from this book which made a very very nice brunch That's nice them yes yeah so I, I make them sometime Katrina yeah definitely love a banana pancake yeah. um and I did receive photographic evidence of the banana pancake so I can confirm they were made <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so yeah um, yeah I would, I would say this is a, a very interesting book not not the usual um fiction about the beach huts but the beach huts are there as well yeah would you say that if you haven't read any veronica henry this is a good place to start because you've got some short stories in there or would you suggest starting with the first beach hut novel uh i would probably go to the novels myself yeah uh, but i know veronica does do some nice short stories but i think you know this this might appeal to somebody who wants to read the stories it might appeal to somebody who wants a recipe book difficult mm. to know um, but personally, I would have started as I did start um, with the actual fiction story books. Um, yeah. But um, no, I, I mean, it's difficult to say really. Um, but I think it's it's got something for everyone in it. So who knows? Yeah. Again, I like how different our list is. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, very. It's, it's, We've just got further comment on the banana pancakes here as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, the, they were good. nice. Yeah. Nice is high praise indeed. Just it's to true. put that into context for you. Like, you know, if you've ever yeah. been taught by me, nice is not a great word in my classroom, but uh, nice coming from Dr. Merriweather here is uh, it's high praise indeed. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bit of a difference, yeah. <laughs> sliding yeah. scale. Yeah. Okay, I am now going to talk about something else that I've already done a whole standalone video here on the channel. So if you've already seen that video, you will know that that book was making the list. If you haven't seen that video after we've watched this, I'll link it up above. Oh, I pointed in the wrong direction that way. Um, but it is also linked in the description box. I made sure and put that in. So if you're watching this live, or watching this before it's fully processed is in the description box. 
So we have Bad Choices by Lucy Vine. Lucy Vine is still one of the very few authors I haven't met, um, even though I have loved her books from the word go. Um, and I talk about exactly why I love sort of all her other books in that video, as well as talking about Bad Choices. Bad Choices um, came out last month in the UK. Well, it came out in June. It's only just last month. Um, but it follows two best friends over the course of um, their kind of growing growing up in um, uh, through adolescence and into adulthood and struggling with the demands of being an adult and having to make adult choices and I just again it's a very character driven book and it's like multiple narrative and it's multiple timeline I think we're seeing a uh, a trend in the books that make my top books list. Um, one of the things I love about Lucy Vine's books is that, um, that she has no filter. And a lot of you know people have that in their books, but then it's edited out. And I just love the fact that like whoever's working with Lucy as her editor, it doesn't get edited out. And I I just enjoy the fact that you know they they talk about. Um, like going to the toilet in front of one another, which wouldn't be for everyone um, in a book. But I'm just like, yeah, that's that's a very sort of like best friend thing to do. And I could just identify with aspects of both of these characters and um, so many of the things, it, you know, it, it's not like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely more of a, you know one character or the other so many of the things that happen to both of them I'm like yeah that's I yeah no that happened to me or like that was what it was like for me or something and and um I just I really from the word go when I picked this up I was like yes I love these characters and I love the fact that we get to revisit them and, and no no year or no like visit with them is too long they're all just like the perfect length again it's kind of really well constructed and really really laugh out loud funny and yet there was some moments that you know were tougher to read because you know that they are based on these characters lives and they have real life experiences and so some of them are going to be tougher but um I do have a video as I say talking all about my love of that book and my love of Lucy Vine in general um her last book before that one uh, made my like top 10 of last year and so you know it was always going to be but I really feel like people are sleeping on Lucy Vine like she is I, I feel like a kind of undercover gem um so need to get need to get on that it's very funny but yeah yeah so all linked oh I've uh I've lost my tab it it, it went away <laughs> it's just disappeared. Hang okay. on, let me put it back. It's fine. It's fine. Oh. It's still sharing, but it like jumped out my hand as I was going to put it onto the next book then. There we go. <laughs> the panic of Katrina looking for the tap. <laughs> almost didn't make it. Yeah, yeah. Um, we had a uh, further comment with the nice being like, that'll do, yeah. If you're, a, if you're a babe fan, you'll understand yes. that one, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Okay, on to the next book. Okay, so here we have Under the Italian Sun by Sue Moorcroft. Another nice cover making you think, oh, I'd like to be there sitting on that little knoll. Just imagine it. Very nice. Um, so this is this is all about a young lady um, who's got a very posh or, well, I don't know if it's posh, but it's a very strange name for somebody in this country, I think. Uh, it's Zia Lucia Costa Chalmers. And uh, so she's, she's kind of suspicious that maybe there's some Italian in her ancestry somewhere. And... Um, she suddenly discovers that the person that she's called mother all her life is in fact not her mother at all. And unfortunately, when she discovers it, it's when her mother has already died and her grandparents have died and nobody knows much about what's gone on. And um, she, you can imagine, is a bit uh, curious about this. And she has a suspicion that she's got some link with Italy. 
and uh, also with the Umbrian region of Italy. So in, eventually she goes off to spend some time there and, and see what she can find out. So she and a friend go and stay in the most wonderful sounding cottage that I wanted to go and live in, never mind stay for a holiday, <laughs> um, in, in Umbria. And um, really she manages to find out quite a lot, but she's not sure whether what she's finding out is going to be good or bad or whether the people that are involved really want to know about this person that they maybe had no clue about before. So she's, she's not having a wonderful, happy time there. Um, she also meets up with a very nice sounding young Italian man called Piero. And he is the son of a local wine producing family. And he has another beautiful house with a beautiful view. Um, and uh, they they get together, but much as she feels she would like him in her future, she, again, she's not sure what she's going to do with what she's found out and whether people are really going to welcome her into the family. So not again, not wishing to give any more spoilers. I don't think I've given you any. Um, I would just say this was a lovely story, beautifully written by Sue Moorcroft, as you would expect if you know Sue Moorcroft's work, and um, just wonderful feeling of Italy through it. You know, you could almost smell the lemon groves and um, feel the sun on your back, and just beautiful, yeah, yeah. wonderful writing. And wonderful backstories for all, all the characters as well. Nice to have a little bit of escapism. Yeah, especially yeah. at this time, yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, well, my next book is um, one that I do have a physical copy of. And mm. it's another one that I have a whole video talking about. So again, it's already in the description box or I will leave it up, up there, that corner. That's it. Oh, I did so well at the beginning, did so well at the beginning. And um, we talked earlier about how audiobooks don't tend to make me cry. This one made me cry with laughter. Um, so I know. So we have nonfiction and this is Broken in the Best Possible Way by Jenny Lawson. Um, again, a very different cover from uh, the UK cover. This is the US cover. It's yeah. very beautiful. I will show you the UK cover in a moment because it's very different. Um, I didn't purposely choose books that have different US and UK covers, but the it, the inside cover of this one has the, a pencil sketch of the front cover, which I think is really cool. And then yeah. the actual naked book itself. We're not just going to talk about what the book looks like, but that's um, that's Jenny Lawson's like Twitter profile picture yeah. um which is like embossed on the book in gold it's just stunning um so I was I was sent a copy of this book as well as the cross stitch which I do in that video so if you want to hear me fully talk about the book whilst cross stitching you can check out that video um but this one you know it's a it's a Jenny Lawson book if you've ever read Jenny Lawson before do the audio book if you can access it because she reads it and she has the timing down of like what she's saying. Um, but the fact that this book starts off with um, an essay called Six Times I've Lost My Shoes Whilst Wearing Them, a list that shouldn't exist. I mean, that's really all you need to know about it and you know she does talk about her physical health and she does talk about her mental health and she does so in a really open and honest way but also in a really hilarious way and you're like how do these things keep happening to you Jenny Lawson I just think it's it's amazing like the the, the thing about losing her shoes is just fantastic. And then there's a whole other bit where she tweeted about something incredibly embarrassing that had happened to her. And instead of people, you know, she put it out onto Twitter expecting people to be like, oh, you're so embarrassing, don't. Everyone replied with embarrassing things that happened to her. And that is the part that made me cry with laughter because they were hilarious. And I know I've shared some of them with you and that yeah. you have also laughed out loud at them. So 
non-fiction highly recommend the audio let me grab that uk cover so you can see what the uk cover looks like as well again very different but that llama does appear in a story in the book because um her like first non-fiction memoir type of book um and the next one they all feature this like taxidermy love that she has and it's interesting I read another book where one of the characters did like a little taxidermy mouse holding a sword type of thing and it's exactly the same one as features on Jenny Lawson's first book cover and so it was all like getting a bit intertwined it was very very bizarre um but you may be thinking well we've covered our top 10 books but of course we have a couple of bonus books (laughs) Of course, we have a couple of bonus books that we do have time to very briefly talk about. And I think these have become bonus books because they were both released at the very end of June. Um, So the very end of Q2, these books snuck in there so much so that even when I put the blog post of this together, they weren't included in the blog post because I hadn't finished reading mine. And I don't know if you'd finished reading yours. So um, if you are up for it as well, uh I'm quite happy to jump into a couple of bonus mentions are you happy to mention yeah. these bonus books okay oh, very much so yeah well here we have oh Debbie Johnson this this book really really got me um it as Katrina says it just came out last week in fact and um I got the audio book of it the day the book came out. Uh, Unfortunately, Amazon didn't get it to me till quite late on in the day. Um, But by the next day, I had already finished it because I could not stop listening. It was just amazing. It's, It's a story that grabs you. And even when you've you're not listening, because you've got to do other things in your life, the story stays with you. It's just amazing. It's just so well written. And the, the, I'm not giving away anything about what it's about because that would be totally wrong. Um, it's just an incredible thing that happens to this uh, lady and it just totally changes her life. And it's it, it's just such a shock when it happens. Uh, we, we said before about gasping uh, with audiobooks. That was me. It was like, oh, what? No. So that's how it went. <laughs> but anybody who reads Debbie Johnson will know that she is a very funny lady. So although it, this is a very serious thing that's happened, and as I say, this uh, so many people's lives are affected by what happened, uh, there's still a lot of humour in there, just Debbie Johnson humour, I would call it. And I can't uh, recommend this book enough to to anybody, uh, whether you know Debbie Johnson's books or not. I'm sure you would enjoy this and um, perhaps be as shocked as I was. Really, really good. I feel like... You started off that by saying, yeah, it just came out last week. I pre-ordered the audio. Amazon took ages to get it to me, but then I listened to it and didn't stop listening to it. Get same, same with the, my next book that I'm going to talk about. I think that's so funny that, that yeah, I had an issue with Amazon cancelling my order because I changed my, updated my credit card. And then when I got it, I started listening to it. And I listened to it on Saturday and finished listening to it on Saturday. So apologies to Haley because we're supposed to be body reading it and she'd started. And then I was like, oh, I haven't started yet. I haven't started yet. And then I was like, sorry, I finished. I didn't I didn't mean to, but I finished. <laughs> I, I, I think really Amazon should get their act together. And, you know, if they're going to give us a book on a certain day, it should, yeah. it should be there at one minute past midnight. <laughs> yeah well my one I did see people who had ordered the physical copy they all got theirs early so I was like Damn it. <laughs> so this is someone I used to know by page two which again a bit like the previous book we talked about just came out in the UK on the 24th of June I found out that this was actually released in the US earlier I had no idea otherwise I would have got my hands on a US 
physical copy earlier. Um, but in in keeping with previous page two novels, I had pre-ordered this one on audiobook. Um, and this one is set in and around North Yorkshire. Um, a lot of it takes place around Brim and Rocks. They talk about going to Harrogate. They talk about going to Ripon. Um, and the narrator of this one does a good job. She even, I, I put this in my review, she even, I would say, delineates between a Harrogate accent and a Ripon accent because we oh. know, you know, having <laughs> spent a lot of time in both of those places that those two accents definitely are different, even though they're so close together in distance. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, this book also deals with um, fostering and looked after children, which um, from having been a teacher, that's something that like creates a lot of emotion in me. Um, and whenever I read or watch something about um, fostering children, I'm like, okay, now I need to go and like, rally all the children I must foster all the children right now um it, it always has that effect on me but I think that this this book does a really good job of showing the like all sides of that it's not just the effect on the foster parents or the foster child it's the foster siblings and then you know if there are any um children who are the biological children of those foster parents it you know talks about the effect on them as well and a bit like previous books that I've talked about we have a bit of a then and now flick back and forth timeline so we get to see Leah and George in their sort of teenage formative years and then we get to revisit them now and see what what their sort of lives how they've impacted on each other without really even knowing it. And um, yeah, when I was um, talking about this with somebody else, I was like, it, it's a bit, I feel like this book was written for me um, because it's, you know, set in and around Yorkshire and it talks about the fostering and it, it does take a moment where it does talk about the teacher of one particular foster child that, you know, was having a bit of a harder time. And I'm like, yeah, I'm glad it kind of like just it was just a very brief moment. And, you know, the teacher, uh, it was sort of talking about the amount of training that that teacher had had. And I was like, that that's a that's a shame that they haven't had more training on this and that school needs to do a better job. <laughs> but like just the it was just like the briefest of sentences. But I was like, just having that sentence included in there, like I appreciate that on like multiple levels. And then, like I say, the narration the accent being different between the Ripon accent and the Harrogate accent like I was really worried it would just be like a generic Yorkshire accent and I'd be like this narrator's clearly doing like a Leeds accent right now when it's all set in and around North Yorkshire that's not going to work but yeah so bonus last week of June books yeah shoehorned in there both of them audiobooks yeah. that we have trouble getting our hands on right up to date we are yeah yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, so there you have it. As I say, please let us know in comments what books have made your favourites lists of Q2. Um, and obviously that opinion on cliffhangers. I think people are always very divided when it comes to cliffhangers as well. Yeah. Um, but yes, thank you once again for coming and being live on my channel with me across the Atlantic Ocean. Very exciting. Very always well always fun to have you um and yeah it's nice I feel like we have a another kind of diverse list of books again a bit like our Q1 list which as I mentioned is linked in the description box below <laughs> of course and yeah and so you don't miss out on our best of Q3 video make sure you are subscribed and hit that notification bell as always um and yeah as long as you'll come back for a Q3 video Oh, definitely. I'll be here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll be reading up till then. And I'm sure that I'll have a few more. Well, I hope so. Yeah. Anyway. yeah. I talk about some exciting July releases in my most recent video, which was my July TBR. So if you haven't seen that, watch that one next. Once this video is processed, I'll make sure it's in the end screen. And uh, yeah, I know you have another book event to go to. So I should let you go. I have such a busy yeah. day. Maybe maybe you'll see the author that I just talked about there. Who knows? 
think you, I might never mm-hmm. tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, I I think another one of those authors um is another one that I talked about in my July TBR video, who has a book coming out in August as well. So that's very exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. I shall I try and um, wrinkle them out, twinkle them out even. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Um, I will be back with another movie review for you on Sunday and then more bookish content, including my June wrap up next week. Thank you so much again to Linda for coming Thank on you. the channel. And Thank uh, you yeah. Watching, if people are watching. Absolutely. And uh, I, and probably we, will see you with another video again very soon. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye.